Welcome back for another round of Strikers. Hey. Um, uh, uh, season five, episode 23. Woo! Woo! Here we go. All right. What should we do first? No party, homie G, right over here. <laughs> okay, let's introduce ourselves. I think Noel is telling us. Jeff, would you like to go next? I'm Jeff. All right. How about our sound and video engineer? I am Ryan, the sound and video engineer. All right. Whitney and Alex. I am Whitney. Hi, I'm Alex. And I'm Pete. Welcome to another Strivecast. Big, big show today. What do we got lined up today? Oh, uh, we have Annie. Okay, yep. Uh, Where's yep. Annie from? Yeah. The... Wex. She's from Wex. That's right. We'll tell you all about that coming up. What else do we have coming up? John Keeley. John Keeley is coming up. He's going to tell us all about what? Uh, Mississippi. That's right. The Mississippi River. And something about daylight savings on my tips and recommendations. (laughs) Okay. There's There's a sneak preview of Noel's tips, tricks, and recommendations. We've also got an Ask Jeff question or two, I think. Right, Jeff? Uh, yes, P. And everybody's favorite trivia. Yes. <laughs> All right. Tough topic today, but we'll get to that later. All right. Anything else? I I, I wish I had anything, but I don't know. <laughs> okay. So should we keep going then? E- oh, um, yes. All right. Then, Jeff, why don't you take us to break? Okay, P. We'll be right back. Welcome to the webcast. Tell us about yourself. Alrighty, thank you for having me today. Um, my name is Annie, and I live here in South Portland, Maine, fairly close to Strive. Um, I grew up in Vermont, and I've lived in five different states, um, mostly around New England in the Midwest and the South, but I went to college in Ohio studied history because I love reading and writing and I'm not a historian now, but <laughs> I, I love my time there. And then I lived in Alabama for one year, which was really cool. And I did something called the Jesuit Volunteer Corps, which I think you guys are pretty familiar with. You have Casey there doing the same program. And then I moved to Boston to be a little closer to my family in Vermont and moved to Maine uh, about three years ago now. So I'm in South Portland. I live with my very active dog and soon to be husband. Well, thanks for joining us today. Yeah. Jeff, you're up. Okay. Thank you, Pete. Thank you very much. You're welcome. <laughs> um, what, what does your uh, wax? Yeah. Um, what do I do at WEX? Great question. <laughs> I am still making sense of it. Now it's uh, WEX does a lot of things. As a whole, WEX does. They are an industrial bank, so they can issue a line of credit. They have their own software for companies to manage their payments, and they also do credit card processing. So they do a lot of big things and each customer uses it differently. Uh, My role is to support day-to-day operations for customers within our corporate payments division. Um, And the biggest, I think the simplest way to describe WEX's benefit to, for my customers is that like for, if you have a credit card and that gives you cash back, WEX essentially does that at a very, very large scale for our customers. They get cash back for making payments with our credit cards to our system. We can share a piece of that pie and um, give that money back to them. No? Okay. What is an average day like average day like for you? 
The average day is lots of time on the computer, all the time on the computer. <laughs> uh, a lot of a lot of sending and receiving emails. Um, I work on a team of about ten other account managers, so we usually check in for at least you know, once or twice a day for just kind of a general working meeting. Um, I get to go into the office kind of whenever there's no set schedule, but I like to get into the office a couple days a week. It's nice to see people. We have this beautiful space downtown. Um, but it's usually checking in with customers to make sure that uh, nothing is broken. They can make their payments on time. Um, you know, working within... Wex across different teams to make sure that we're meeting their needs appropriately. Um, so yeah, a lot of a lot of time on the computer and troubleshooting. Jeff, back to you. Okay, thank you, Pete. You're welcome. Um, what what is your favorite part of your job? Good question. I would say uh, the satisfaction of being able to make our customers' lives easier. Um, it's really the light bulb moment is like priceless and that's kind of what, <laughs> what motivates me is if they're stumped on something or can't figure something out, being able to work on a project and get that done for them to help make their company's processes go easier um, and seamlessly. I would just say being able to take a little bit of the load off of our customers is very rewarding. It'd be nice if other companies had that mindset. <laughs> Who doesn't really? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Noel, back, yeah. Back, um, back to you, Noel. I mean, community support and um, E N G A. G E M N T agreement is when Rex values why is that important to you? Another very good question. Um, it is a little cliche, but I think a rising tide lifts all ships. And if we're able to, if that's Wex or my team with Inlex or anything bigger. I think if we're able to support the community and give back to what other people need, whether that is direct community service or what our customers need, I think that that gets us more engaged and kind of helps everybody do better and understand what, what other people are really needing on a day-to-day -day basis. So um, yeah, I feel like that's important to me because it just helping others helps helps yourself and it just helps us care a little bit more about what other people need. Sounds good, right, Jeff? Uh yeah. And you're you're up with the next one. Um what is your favorite thing about living in Maine? Favorite thing about living in Maine would be the four distinct seasons. It's really nice to have something to look forward to as soon as the weather begins to change for good. And I feel like there's a new bit of excitement that comes with that. And I've, that's very unique to New England, but I've lived in places where the seasons aren't quite as distinct or don't really exist. And, uh, it's nice to feel like there's like some sense of change in energy, like when, when a new season begins and all sorts of different activities you can do in the winter or the summer or the fall and just enjoy the natural beauty here. Great. Well, that's the end of our real interview questions segment. So now, guys, what's it time for? Lightning round. That's uh -huh. right. I'm nervous for this one. I don't have, <laughs> I, don't have I don't have any good jokes. <laughs> uh -oh. Jeff, want to kick off? Kick off the lightning round. Okay. Okay. Fire one ready. Okay. Uh, what's your favorite instrument? Uh, alto saxophone. I played it in middle school. There you go. <laughs> okay. 
Um, what type of what is your favorite type of, of business you like to be in? Mm-hmm. <laughs> favorite type of business? Um, I would probably say something related to food. It's not where I am now, but any kind of restaurant or hospitality is a lot of fun to work in and reap the benefits of as well if you're working there. Jeff? Uh, what is your favorite superpower and why? <laughs> a superpower that I personally have or that I wish I had? Either. Okay. I would say probably to know exactly how other people are feeling. Okay. Okay. What is your favorite Disney princess movie? Unfortunately, I didn't watch a ton of these growing up. (laughs) You'll have to take my parents up on that one, but... (laughs) Pocahontas. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure. That works. Jeff? Uh, yes. You got yeah, one more? The, uh, yes. Yep. Um, what's your favorite sea turtle? <laughs> favorite sea turtle? Uh, the baby ones that you see in pictures of like Costa Rica. There you go. Yeah. All right, Noel. Okay. What is your favorite high school show? My favorite high school show? Yeah. Uh, Outer Banks. Ah. Uh, right. And then, Ryan, uh, here's the question that I think Annie's not looking forward to, but go ahead. Um, Tell us your best joke. Oh no! Oh gosh, I had I had time to prepare this. Um, I'm sure Noel or Jeff could make one up for you if you're interested in that. No, Noel or Jeff, can I source one from you? Uh, <laughs> knock knock. Who's there? Um. Um, the queen. The queen. The queen. queen. The oh, the the queen who. The queen who lost her hat, but she got it back from Mickey Mouse. Well, <laughs> rolls right off your tongue. Makes sense. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I haven't heard that one. I'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely my favorite one. That's a good one. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Uh, well, Annie, before we let you go, we should point out that Wex has been a longtime supporter of our programs, especially Stream okay. Rocks, been the title sponsor good. of that for a number of years. And we're hoping good. that they come back on this year. We're in the process of that right now, but I'm um, just been a big supporter of Strive for a long time. So we're very appreciative of uh, of Wex and all that they do for our community. Good. I'm happy to hear that. Of course, you guys are doing awesome things. It's been awesome to learn more about Strive to Casey and um, yeah. Okay. Jeff, would you like to take us a break? Yes, Pete. We'll be right back. Drivecast is brought to you by Your ad is right here. Tell us about it, Ryan. Do we have any special so, stories? Yes, we do. Um, for a March special, we hit doing four episodes for thirty dollars. Whoa! So you can give us a call at two zero seven 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 four six two seven eight, or email us strivecast at pslstrive dot org. There you go. There you have it. March special. You can be a sponsor on four episodes with that one good price. That is a bargain. Four episodes. Yeah. All right. Jeff, would you like to take us to break? 
Uh, yes, Pete, we'll be right back. Welcome, John Kelly. Thank you. Welcome, John. Yeah, this month I'll be taking you down the Mississippi River. Ooh. Oh. One of the bit, the mighty Mississippi. <laughs> Can't wait. Let's hear it. All right. There are over 260 species of fish in the Mississippi River and its floodplain. That is 25% of, this, of the fish species in all of North America. It is, the sec, it is the second largest river in North America. It is second to the Missouri River, which is about 100 miles longer. The speed of the river is faster when it reaches the Gulf. The speed of the river at the headwaters in Minnesota is about 1.2 miles per hour. But when it reaches New Orleans, the speed is three miles per hour. The Mississippi Flyway is a major migration path for birds that follows along the Mississippi River. It is used by about 40% of the migratory birds that spend the spring and summer in the U.S. The Mississippi River collects the water that drains from 31 states and two Canadian provinces. That's 41% of the U.S. that drains into the river. The river helps to define part of the borders of 10 U.S. states. It defines the borders of Minnesota, Wisconsin, Illinois, Kentucky, Tennessee, Mississippi, Missouri, Louisiana, Iowa, and Arkansas. The Mississippi River drops about 1,475 feet along its length. It starts out at 1,475 feet above sea level in Minnesota and drops to sea level at the Gulf of Mexico. That's a change of 1,475 feet along its length. 700 miles of the Mississippi is free of dams. The portion of the river from St. Louis to New Orleans is free of dams, which, which allows large trains or barges some as long as 2,000 feet to transport commodities between these two cities. The Mississippi River is a major transportation route for goods and commodities. Approximately 460 million tons of freight are transported on the Mississippi River each year. Commodities transported on the river include yeah. agricultural crops, coal, steel, petroleum, and aluminum. The, the widest point of the Mississippi River is 11 miles. It is located at Lake Winnebagogish in Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Now, does anybody have any questions? Has anyone ever swim the whole link of the Mississippi River? Yes, Martin Sturl was the first person to swim the entire length of the river for 68 days in a row from July 4th Ow. to September 9th, 2002. A long time. Long yeah. swim. <laughs> it was a long swim. Hope it was hot. Jeff, do you have a question for John? Um, uh, can you drive alone in, a, in the Mississippi River? Yes, you can. The Great River Road, also called the All-American Road, traces the course of the Mississippi for 
3,000 miles through 10 U.S. states. Well, that'd be cool have, to that would be cool to drive. I have a question for you, John. What is yeah. a Mississippi River boat? They are called steamboats, and they played a major role in the 19th century development of the Mississippi River and its tr tributaries, allowing large-scale transport of passengers and freight up and down the river. Oh. Yeah. I learned a lot about the river today. Yep. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mighty Mississippi, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody Thanks. else have any other questions? Is there any sharks in the Mississippi River? I think there are some, there might be some in the Gulf. Oh. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Anything else for John? I don't think so. No, so. Okay. Well, John, thanks so much for joining us again this month. Thank you. You learned something when you're on. Thank you, John. Yeah. Thanks, John. Also, Jeff, you want to take us to break? Thanks, John. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, yes, Pete. Um, we'll be right back. We're back. What's it time for now? Uh, it's time for the trivia game. It is time for our trivia game. And today, today, March 7th, 2023, actually every year I think on March 7th, is National Alexander Graham Bell Day. Oh. So we are <laughs> going to play a little game to honor friend of the show, Alexander Graham Bell, because everybody loves their phone, right? Mm -hmm. um, well, speaking of which, I know we did the serial thing maybe last week or the week before, but today is National Serial Day. It is, in fact. It is also... Maybe we should replay that trivia. <laughs> we'll get them it all is, right. <laughs> it is also National Sportsmanship Day. Oh, here, but uh, I didn't think we'd do very well at that, so I passed on that one. So You thought we did better at Alexander Graham Bell. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's hard to ask trivia questions about sportsmanship. You know, <laughs> that's sort of an opinion area. All right, so I've got six questions. The first one is a layup. Okay, mm -hmm. so remember the way we play, the first person to ring in and answer correctly gets two points if multiple people answer that same answer. So the first one, Alexander Graham Bell invented the what? Invented the what? Who's going to ring in first? He invented the what? Alexander Graham Bell invented the blank. Not the light. Um, nope. Uh, uh... He may have given a hint. I certainly did. A the telephone. Phone. The telephone. <laughs> yeah. All right. So I'm gonna. I'm feeling generous. I'm gonna give one point to everyone. For okay. That. Okay. Yeah. All right. Hey. Jeff, why do you have your hand up? <laughs> yes, Jeff. Um. Score uh, recap. Hey, uh, <laughs> it was Claire Bell. I think it's gonna be clams. It's not <laughs> clam bell. <laughs> Alexander Clam Bell sounds like one of those like superstars that they have come to the Sea Dogs that like is a character, but it's actually Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone. It's Graham, like a Graham cracker. He also did not invent the Graham cracker. He did not invent <laughs> clams or Graham crackers. Oh, he, he invented the phone. That is correct. <laughs> Point for Jeff. Okay. So when he invented the phone, his first call was to his assistant in the next room. And he said yeah. something along the lines of like, hey, buddy, come here. But he called his assistant by name. What was his assistant's name? Uh, here we go again. His last last name. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what he said. Anybody? I don't know. Oh, okay. Oh, oh. hey, Pete. Yeah, Jeff, go ahead. Um, uh, Clam Bell. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the last name is everybody. Uh, uh Bell. Hey, Pete? No, it is his last name, but it's his assistant's last name. 
Uh, actually, I don't know. Anybody? anybody? It, it could be everybody. It's now an iconic statement that says, Mr. Watson, come here. I want to see you. And his assistant, Thomas Watson, was in the next room, received the call and heard the voice clearly. And that was the first telephone call ever made. And in honor of the day he was granted the patent, people around the world celebrate March 7th which is today, as a day of innovation and invention. There you go. Can Mr. Watson come here is like a phrase that people... Uh, uh, it, uh, yes, it, it, iconic. Uh, you guys didn't know that? <laughs> okay. This is why we didn't do sports. I've never heard that in my life. So not good. No, what's up? What about who invented the cell phone? Um, I don't know the person's I, name. I can tell you the I, company. Yeah. I can tell you the company. It was not Apple. It's, the Apple phone. It was well, Apple invented the iPhone, but the first <laughs> cell phone was Motorola. I did find that. It took them 10 years after the patent to do it. Motorola. Motorola. There you go. Point for Jeff. <laughs> Alex, if you complain on National Sportsmanship Day, you lose a point. <laughs> I didn't say anything. <laughs> Just saying, yeah. All right. Five points for this one. Five bonus points in the middle of the middle of the show. Bonus point question. Okay. Alexander Graham Bell uh, invented another thing. Again. It was not food of any type. What other invention did Alexander Graham Bell invent? Jeff. He invented the wheel. Okay. He did, unfortunately, he did not invent the wheel. <laughs> okay. I have to say radio. Uh, he did not invent the radio. No. No. Not wheel. Not radio. Anybody else have a guess? What about like a speaker? Uh, you may have, but this is not the answer we're looking for. <laughs> no, yeah, like some kind of camera. He did not invite the, invent the camera. Have a microphone. No, but good. That actually may be correct, but we're actually looking for. He invented the metal detector. Believe oh, it or not, uh, he invented. The metal detector, Pete. That's correct. Another <laughs> point for Jeff. There we go. Um, Great job, actually, Jeff. He, developed, he was instrumental in developing new medical technology to find a bullet in President Garfield. Uh, and that led to the invention President of the metal detector. Garfield. President uh, Garfield. Not, uh, Garfield not the cat. cat. No. He did not take uh, any bullets out of Garfield the cat. Okay. So, point for Jeff, I guess. Who is oh. President Garfield? President Garfield? United States President, way back. Uh, okay. All right. Question five. His wife and his mother both had, so Alexander Graham Bell's wife and his mother both had a disability. What uh, type of disability was it? Asperger's. Is not correct. Noel's shaking his head. What? What is it, Noel? Is it Down syndrome? It is not Down syndrome. Uh, autism? It is not autism. How about autistic? It is not autistic. Uh, How about CP? It is CP. not. Uh, CP. Right. Oh, 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 what's that one? Um, the palsy. That's CP, I think. Deaf or blind? You can't choose two. <laughs> I'll go deaf. That is correct. Wow, wow. Alex. Yeah. Both his wife and his mother were both deaf. And he and his father yeah. were very involved in teaching people sign language and, and working with the deaf throughout their entire life. It's <laughs> one of the reasons he was working on the phone. Hmm. All right. Hey, well, hey, Pete. Alex gets her point back that she lost for the sportsmanship thing. No. He, he, okay. Yes, okay. Jeff. Oh, sorry. Death. Death. You got it. Another point from Jeff. Crushing it today. <laughs> Noel, Noel, Jeff. Noel, yes. What do you need? <laughs> What's up, Noel? Okay, if we talk about that, who invented the school in Macris Island? I, I don't know the answer to that. The death school place. Right. I don't know who founded it there, though. Uh, oh, who was the founder, though, too? I think that was the question, right? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the answer? No. 
I don't either. All right, last one. This is for 10 points if you get it exactly right. Otherwise, it's worth five. Close this without going over. If we know all of this. I'm going to give you a hint on this one, too. He was 75, Alexander Graham Bell, on Alexander Graham Bell Day today, we're celebrating. He passed away at 75 years old. Oh. Uh, what year did he pass away in? The 10 big ones. Uh, I will give you a hint. It is in the 1900s. Yep. 1900, Pete. <laughs> 1900, right on the nose? Yep. Okay. I'm gonna write, I got to write these down. All right. Noel, what do you got? Okay. 1900. So what about 1971? Okay. Alex? Um, nineteen seventeen. This is, this is a tough one. Yes, it is. That's why it's worth ten points. Ryan, nineteen sixty-five. Okay. And with nineteen thirty. Okay. None of you are correct. Exactly. <sighs> How many points did I say is worth for the closest one going over five? Five. All right. Five. Alex with 1917 yeah. because he passed away. Alexander Graham Bell, RIP, 1922. Mm. What about his father, Peter? His father also passed away. What year? Uh, before 1922. I do not know the answer to that. Uh, I can try to find out for you. Yeah. I do not know the exact answer to that. He was predeceased by his father. All right. So give me a minute to tidy up some scores. Yeah. All right. Okay. Why don't you uh, talk about your favorite Alexander Graham Bell memory? I don't really know him. I don't really know him. <laughs> okay, here we go. Never had personal At the end of however many weeks we've been doing this, this is the updated score. We have in first place Ryan with twenty nine, wow. followed by Alex with twenty four, Whitney with twenty two, Jeff nineteen, Noel seventeen. Oh wow. yes. Okay. Yes. All right. What did do you skip, Whitney? Whitney has mm-hmm. twenty two. Okay. Okay. Thanks for looking out for me, Noel. A big day yeah, for yeah. Alex and Jeff on Alexander Graham Bell Day. Yes. So also National Serial Day, also National Sportsmanship Day, also National Unique Names Day. Oh. Okay. I think that's all we've got. Yep. See you next week for more trivia. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Jeff, want to take us a break? <laughs> yes, Pete. We'll be right back. Okay, I I do have a a thing for my segment. Why don't you introduce your segment? What's your segment called? Day, daylight savings. Daylight savings, <laughs> I know. <laughs> daylight savings time begins every year on the second Sunday in March. That is this Sunday. March 12th. We lose an hour of sleep. Mm-hmm. When sp- we spring forward, so to go to bed an hour early this Sunday night. The good tip right there. If you want to go to bed an hour early this Saturday night. And Sunday night, probably. Sunday, yeah. you'll still be tired. Oh, <laughs> uh, yes. Noel, what are you going to do with your extra hour on Sunday? Uh, I'll be with my folks. Hmm. I, know, I know there will be a weekend I'm back in my apartment on a Saturday. Sunday. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You have any uh, other recommendations for us this week? Oh, what recommendations? 
Yes, I do. Okay. A lot of great movies coming out. Oh, like what? Toy Story, Toy Story 5. Toy Story 5? When does that come out? I don't know yet, but it's in the making. Oh. Hmm. There you go. Cool. And there is a couple of other future Spider-Man movies might come out. How many Spider-Man so, movies do we need? <laughs> um, they have an amazing three with Andrew. And On the, the first original, three basis with Andrew. <laughs> and the first hmm. Spider-Man four. No, the fourth one is not the first one. The the fourth one is the the time is the fourth one in new home, but the one that's with cat, cat woman, but the one with Toby is Spider Man four. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, right. <laughs> Toy Story five is a thing. It's in development. But it might not be released until either 2027 or 2028. Oh, boy. Gotta wait. Yeah. Pixar has three untitled movies on Slate dated for release in June 2025, 2026, and June 2026. So that could be it, June 2026. Oh, Cobra Kai Season 6 is coming out, and there's a show... The Karate Kid is a spinoff it's with different people. There's another Karate Kid movie coming out, too. Wow. Noel is dropping all kinds of inside Hollywood <laughs> recommendations and tips for us. Uh, all right. Anything else, Noel? No. All right. Then, Jeff, why don't you take us a break? Okay, Pete. We'll be right back. All right, we're t- we're back. It's what time is it now? I can't even talk. It's my segment. It's my happy segment. It is your segment. <laughs> What's it called? Ask me. Ask Jeff. Here we go. We've got a question today, maybe even two, really, if you count the PS, from Dan from Portland, who writes, "Why is pizza round, but it comes in a square box and it's cut into triangles?" Love the show, Dan in Portland. What a question. It's a tricky one. Why is pizza round that comes in a square? It sounds like a riddle, but I don't think it is. Why is pizza <laughs> round that comes in a square box and then it's cut into triangles? Dan in Portland. Um, I don't know, but I think um, it's round and it's in a box. Yep. Probably it's be hard to make a round wild. box. Yeah, I was gonna say that'll be part of the reason. It's easier to make a square box. And I mean, why is it cut in the from a standpoint? Uh, I, I, um, um, it, maybe it's because um, um, it, it be it can fit in the box. It sounds good to me. I like that. I mean, it's- not all pizzas are round, though, but. That's like the traditional form factor of pizza, along with the traditional cut mm-hmm. style was going cut diagonally for slices. But not all slices are cut out diagonally like that either. Good point. But I guess for the box shape and the round pizza in it, you probably just said the box itself to make that shape is the most economical, feasible way to make a box for it. Like it would cost, like it would. I don't know if it's like not cost feasible to make a round shaped pizza box just to put a round pizza in. Hmm. Or somebody want to have the corners to put like the sauces into. I remember Papa John's used to do that. Well, Noel, do you have any thoughts on this topic? Hello, uh, Papa John's. <laughs> no, I'm just saying that that's what they. I we should that was their tradition. reach out to someone the from the, the pizza place. The box. See, have room for that. Um. And we a a a p. Yes, Jeff. Um. Uh. If they, I think, cut it in the you know, 
that kind of size, it'll, it'll make it fit in the box. That's a, that works for me. Oh, it just Absolutely. fits. If you're a Some pizza place, don't there, need an answer, right? It's just the way it is. There, email us, <laughs> strivecast at pslstrive.org. Let us know. Also, a pizza place would be a very good guest, I think. So. Yeah, I think for the box itself, it's probably just an economical reason to make them square shape, but still the pizza style being around the traditional form of factor of pizza made, but it can be in rectangle or square as well. In you can slice it out in squares like rectangles too, but the traditional way is like cutting down to make triangle shaped pizza slices too. And then we have a PS question, which is really a second question from Dan from Portland. He's asking the hard hitting questions today. He says, PS, can you cry underwater? I don't think so. Why not? Um, how can what do you, you got? Can, can you make bubbles when you cry? I actually don't know. <laughs> what do you think, Jeff? Can you cry underwater? Oh uh, yes. Oh. Okay. So we got one yes, one no. Let's, Ryan, what do you say? I think you oh, can. Is... But you're already underwater, so the tears are like. Along with your water. Yeah. So that's a yes for you? Yeah. Okay. Alex? Um, I feel like you can't. I feel like there's something about the water like or like pressing into oh, your face like pressure. won't let you actually cry. Okay. I think you could try to cry, but I don't think anything would come out. Whitney, what do you think? I feel like you probably can. I don't know the answer to this, so let's go to our friend Google. Okay. Oh, first it. trivia question? <laughs> <laughs> it's, it felt like trivia. Oh, according to The Guardian, it says, no, that's not possible, though it's obvious to think that tear ducts should work really fine underwater. The density of the water is more than that of air. When you are underwater, that fluid pressure won't let the tear come out. So that's <laughs> physics there. About that. I think so. So so apparently that's, for our friend Dan in Portland, that's a big negative. Oh, for De this is not the game yet. This is not the game yet. This is our Ask Jeff question that you jumped in on quickly. Jeff, do you have any comments for Dan in Portland or anything else you'd like to say? Uh, yes. Um, um, I see. I was a uh, uh, no to that question. That's correct. <laughs> there you go, Dan. You heard it from Jeff. Definitively. All right. Anything else you'd like to say, Jeff? Um, I think that's going to be it. All right. If you would like to be like Dan and send a question to Jeff, do so. Strivecast at pslstrive.org. Strivecast at pslstrive.org. Ask Jeff. All right. Yeah. Yeah. It's a break, Jeff. We'll be right back. Strivecast is brought to you by. Listeners like you. Listeners like who, Ryan? Mindy Marshall. Yeah, I got Mindy. Thanks, Mindy. High school music from Mindy. Thanks, Mindy, for listening. And Jeff, tell them how they could be listener of the week. Um, you can uh you can you can send us a, you can send us a email, or you can uh, uh you can send us an email, or you can uh call us at um six two. Seven eight. Yep. Six two seven eight. See what happens. Yeah. yeah. It's on Alexander Graham Bell Day. We want to dial all the numbers. Two zero seven 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 four six two seven eight. There you go. All right. Or you could just like any of our posts, or you know, leave us a review. Any of that will work. So, but thanks for listening. And Jeff, would you like to take us a break? Yes, Pete. We'll be right back. It's hard to wrap it up. That's right, yeah. Jeff. It's a beautiful day to wrap it up. It is a beautiful day to wrap it up. Noel, do you have a disgusting wrap of the day? Oh yes. Okay. It's a um a turkey cantaloupe <laughs> macaroni doing the macarena, <laughs> the locomotion, and some cream 
fold the cheese on top of your macaroni on your lasagna wrap. On a lasagna wrap? Wow. Yeah. Wow. What wow. would you call that wrap? I call it a cream Abdul Jabbar wrap. Cream Abdul Jabbar wrap? Huh. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, there's that. Um, Ryan, are we hiring? Yes, we are. Strive is still hiring. And with a sign bonus of $1,750, check out pslstrive.org slash employment. Okay. Whitney, how about Strive yes. Rocks? I would love to tell you about Strive. Dream of Abdul Jabbar. Right? <laughs> Strive Rocks, it's coming up. It, we're less than two months away now. May 5th, May 6th, we'll be staying up all night on Zoom from 8 p.m. to 8 a.m. and have so many fun things lined up, and we're still working on planning more. So, if you'd like to get involved, head over to striverocks.org. We're also going to be having another Strive Rocks committee meeting next Wednesday, March 15th. And if you'd like to attend, message us here if you're listening on Facebook or Instagram, or go to our website and email me or Casey. There you go. Heard it here first. Anything else we should talk about, you guys? Let me thank the guests. Thank a couple people. Yes, good point. Alex, would you like to thank everybody? I would love to thank everybody. Thank you first to Annie from Wex for coming on and sharing a little bit more about what you do. And again, thank you to Wex for being such a strong supporter of all things Strive. And thank you to John Keeley for coming on the show and sharing more about the Mississippi River. The, what, what did he call it? The, the Mighty, Mighty Mist. Mississippi. Mighty Mississippi. <laughs> Learned a lot about Mississippi. the Mighty Mississippi today. <laughs> you imagine swimming that. Wow. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you. All right. Anything else to our from our hosts? I I I I wish, but I don't think. So. <laughs> Wait, don't maybe tell them your recommendation again. What do they need to do Saturday night? Oh, set your clocks forwards. That's right. <laughs> One hour forward on Saturday forget. night. Don't forget is to it, spring ahead. Is it I Saturday? guess this would be the better one to forget though, because you'd show up early for everything. But, no. <laughs> is it Saturday or Sunday? Saturday, well, it's technically like Sunday at 2 a.m. or something like that, yeah. but unless you're going to be awake at 2 a.m., probably do it before you go to bed Saturday night. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Jeff, hey, um, anything else? Uh, nope. Um, uh, AP, are, are we still on the air? We sure are. Okay. All right. Then uh, let's say goodbye. Yep. Bye, y'all. Bye. Thank you.